Pausen, a visiting professor of forecasting and innovation at the London South Bank University. James, good to speak to you. At the end of the report there, whatever you think of it, it's coming. Uh, would you eat it? Oh, certainly. Yes, I think anybody who believes in innovation, anybody who wants to cultivate their palate, must try new things. Uh, we're too risk-averse in this country, and I would give it a go. And I think part of the promise of lab-grown meat is that we can have new kinds of tastes, and eventually it's quite tricky at the moment. It'll take longer than many reports suggest. New textures of eating artificial meat. We might even experiment with animals we don't currently eat uh, and get their stem cells and make artificial meat. I think it's all to the good. More variety, say I. So, any pitfalls? No, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, you know, it will be subject to the usual regulation of uh, the British government and all of that, and there will be flaws, but on the whole, it's likely to be uh, very safe. I think the pitfalls are more to do with the extreme positions that people take over food nowadays, just as they do over sugar, fizzy drinks, uh, you name it. So we've got people who think that uh, what you, I think, somewhat unfairly call fake steaks could sort of save the planet with uh, uh, lowering CO2 and allowing us to let Britain be overgrown with woodland, as the Adam Smith Institute suggests in its new report. Um, and then there are the other people who say, no, no, uh, you know, artificial meat's not uh, authentic, it's bound to lead to disaster, it's like genetically modified foods, we can't have any of that. These extremes only tell us that food has become politicised and that people like to read into food positions they already take about the environment or animals uh, and especially nowadays the reputedly disgraceful habits, eating habits, of the working class, especially the white working class. I think we've got to keep a cool head in all of this, certainly go ahead with more research and development with uh, these foods that are unfairly labelled by their critics, Frankenburgers and, and stuff like that. Uh, we should do more experiments. At the same time, we need to mechanise agriculture in the developing world, uh, equip it with more IT as well, uh, experiment more with genetically modified foods to raise yields, as they have done, without everybody dying at once. These are the wider changes in agriculture and land use that we need to, you know, to feed a growing planet. So but the way, uh, for so the, way for, the way forward in, in in this specific sphere is you talk about the two extremes. There, it is somewhere. It's somewhere in the middle, isn't it? Because you know, if you look at the stats, thirty percent of land on Earth is used for livestock. You don't need to reduce it to zero, but it needs to be somewhere in the middle, and you can reduce it. It's just the way you go about it. Well, that, uh, that's true, but, you know, we're not facing the kind of apocalyptic crisis of, you know, soaring Singaporean snaffling uh, uh, of meat that the uh, Adam Smith Institute would suggest. You know, they talk about exponential growth in meat consumption. If you know your maths, that means it's without limit, that everybody would be eating more and more meat for years and years to come. That's not the case. We don't face a crisis of land use in this way. But in what the developing world, there is an increased consumption of meat, isn't there? Because th there's that yeah, link that's between right. people, it... people coming into what we would class as the middle classes, having more expendable income, eating more meat. Well, that's something to be celebrated, not to be uh, disturbed about. And we've got a long, long way to go before we would ever need to rely on just laboratory meat to solve that problem. There are many other methods to do with arable land, land use generally, more intensive housing uh, on our land surface in Britain in particular. Uh, all of these things need taking into account. So it's not a panacea, this artificial meat. It's something that we need to give a whirl to and will play its part in the food supply of the future. But it won't um, rescue the planet and, uh, you know, there are many obstacles still to be overcome. OK, James, thanks for now. James would try it. I'd probably have a go. James, thanks. <laughs> uh, let's check the weather.